All right, guys, well, welcome to this video here. We are having an interview with Mr. Greg Snell, who is a professional travel videographer and photographer. You guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys who watch my channel know Greg. If not, go check out his channel. I will link it in a card right here and also at the end of this video and in the description. Greg, I've been watching for a couple of years now when I uh, saw him at the first uh, trip to Patagonia with BVS. What? Two, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago now. So. <laughs> So we didn't give Greg any time to prepare for this interview, so this is all where you're pretty much winging it. Here we go. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> so Greg, as um, Mike said, you're living a nomadic lifestyle. Uh, why did you start that lifestyle? I really love traveling. Like That is my number one passion. I want to live a lifestyle that allows me the freedom to travel. The opposite of that is a nine to five and being mm -hmm. sort of stuck in one place and owning a home and uh, so I try and do like the complete opposite of just being nomadic and, and really living minimalistic okay. and it's all about travel at the end of the day. Okay. So is the traveling part the part that you most enjoy? Yeah, yeah. Traveling inspires me to stay creative. Mm -hmm. I'm really uh, interested by other cultures and different food and meeting new people and learning new languages. Uh, so travel kind of keeps that spark alive mm -hmm. all the time. And what do you think is the most uh, challenging? Good question. The most challenging thing, honestly, is financial um, uh, consistency. Mm -hmm. So making enough money to sustain the lifestyle, to sell your photographs, sell your videos consistently. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to do it for the last couple of years, but really it's just like up and down all the time. Mm -hmm. So by far the biggest uh, challenge mm -hmm. is finding like um, passive income, mm -hmm. right. right? Like trying to create passive income through stock photography or stock video yeah. and trying to build those portfolios and at the same time get client work and do work with Brennan and do work uh, on my own. It's, uh, you know, trying to find that balance is the, the hardest challenge. Okay. And um, where do you get your assignments from? Networking, 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 networking. So a lot of my assignments are with uh, tourism boards, mm -hmm. destinations, or brands, okay. so things like mountain biking companies or small group adventure companies, even clothing companies, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's really a lot of comes down to word of mouth, creating a profile, uh, putting yourself out there on social media, like what you guys are doing here on this channel, mm -hmm. uh, having my own YouTube channel, which I hope you go and check out, yes. plugging it yes. wherever possible. Yeah. Like that kind of thing is important and it's hard to put yourself out there, but when you do, yeah, people are going to then see it and if the right people see it then they might be interested in hiring you mm -hmm. because they think that your work is really good and they've mm -hmm. seen it before so networking is key for sure then there's a couple of like uh sort of number one conferences that i like to go to to, to put myself out there and mm -hmm. see if i can get new work one is itb in berlin mm -hmm. which is the biggest travel trade fair in the world mm -hmm. but for me it's important that i uh, show face mm -hmm. and try and get new jobs that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of it comes down to networking and doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. You told us off camera that you're going next to Berchtesgaden mm -hmm. and after that to Malta. Mm -hmm. Is it the way that you have to pay for all that travel or is the next client paying for that travel you're doing from A to B? Yeah, it depends. It usually? Depends okay. on the contract. Okay. So a lot of the times, because Nelly and I are nomadic, we do try and uh, get the travel expenses covered mm -hmm. in the in the contract. Mm -hmm. Say I've gotten a job in like Thailand, mm -hmm. the, the chances of the, the client paying for my flights from Europe are slim, mm -hmm. like unless they really, really want you there. So within Europe, if there's like a train ride from where we are now in Switzerland to Burgess and it's only like four hours by mm -hmm. train, five hours, they might cover that fee. We're also really lucky in, in Europe that flights are really cheap, right? right? And, and it is normal within the industry to get your travel expenses covered, accommodation covered, and even like a daily strip in for food. Okay. Okay. So that is normal. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, yes, I do get my travel expenses covered. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure um, a lot of the people watching now are um, very curious where uh, where you book your flights. Where do you get like cheap flights? Do you have um, any trick with that or? Yeah, Nelly, <laughs> my German girlfriend. She's my trick. She's doing all the work for you. She does a lot of the logistics. I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, we're producing two videos a week on my channel, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm trying to stay up with my accounting and my small business and pitching for new clients mm -hmm. and trying to produce uh, new work as well. Yeah. And Nelly's kind of come on board with me she also has her own business she does her own thing and she's mm -hmm. pretty busy as well but she likes to kind of manage our logistics uh, because I tend to forget what day it is mm -hmm. or what week it is whatever but that being said if I'm on my own like of course I manage that stuff myself mm -hmm. so but yeah no not really any tricks I mean I use Skyscanner mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, yeah. You use that as well? Yeah. yeah, Skyscanner tends to be pretty good at like sort of filtering out your options. Mm -hmm. And then I'll maybe go straight to the airline yeah. Uh, or do like an incognito window in Chrome if I think that Skyscanner is trying to read my data mm -hmm. <laughs> to change, yeah. change the ticket price. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all I really got for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. From all the places you visited, is there any place that you would say, I'd live there? Ooh, good one. Okay, so I've been to 88 countries and I'm 32 years old. That's awesome. I've been traveling the world as a job for like almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I love it, right? Yeah. So it's hard for me to go back to the same place. Right. So that's a difficult question. I think I'm still kind of looking for home. Okay. And I, I'm not sure I've really found it. I'm from Canada and uh, just outside of Toronto. But this year, my parents are leaving that uh, that city mm -hmm. and moving somewhere else. And that's kind of like the idea of home where right. I grew up is, is no longer going to be there. Right. So it makes it even more nomadic this year with right. them leaving where it's like, okay, where is that home? So there's a few countries that mm -hmm. I do really like and I could spend a lot of time in. Okay. First one is Spain. Okay. I speak Spanish. I really mm -hmm. like the Mediterranean cuisine. Got a few friends there from time that I've spent in South America and in Spain. Nice. Um, and the, the coast is beautiful. There's lots to explore. The weather's really nice. On and on and on. Perfect. Since uh, a lot of people from this channel, they obviously watch for the landscape photography. So along those same kind of lines is uh, where is your favorite place for landscape photography? I was recently in Iceland mm -hmm. in the winter. Yeah. And I've been there in the summer. Right. And I think that the, like, the amount of incredible landscape variety, right. both summer and winter, in the space and how easy it is to get to right. is possibly one of the top in right. the world for right. sure. And oh, it's yeah. so popular, yes. like obviously yes. for a reason. I think there's a lot of countries that have a lot going for it, like the United States, right. where, you know, with like Hawaii, Alaska, Utah, where you're from, Arizona. Right. There's a lot going on there as well, but it's so big. Mm -hmm. Like to get from all those places would take forever, right? Mm -hmm. Even Argentina. Argentina's got desert, mountains, Patagonia. It's got the Iguazu Falls and like oh, yeah. tropical rainforest. Yes. But to get from Iguazu to Patagonia is huge yes. and it costs you a lot of money. So right. I think in Iceland, you've got a lot of variables that are easy to get to. So. Right. Or so the last, uh, maybe I'm asking you for a little bit of advice for people who are watching. If you were to give one piece of advice about... Uh, maybe making this a living, mm -hmm. photography, videography, uh, what would that advice be? Collaborate and grow your social channels. I think for, for a lot of the creators out there that have skill and have talent mm -hmm. and are looking to, to build their businesses, the best way to do it is to find other people that are doing similar things, right. connect with them, don't be afraid, put yourself out there and, uh, and try and see if you can learn from one another, collaborate, grow your own social profiles, uh, and and start like pitching put yourself out there see if you can get your local businesses or community to support you and you might be able to start making money that's your best opportunity is right in your backyard perfect all right guys well that's going to be it for this video now uh, this is this actually the second video from this meetup and this collaboration with greg and nelly so make sure you go check out both of their channels i will link them in the description both uh, greg's and nelly's and yeah thanks guys so much for watching we really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one bye is that good? Yes, awesome. Thanks. I like I it. Really enjoy that.